What is it like to play the king of clay on his favorite surface? Well, today I'm joined by former top 100 ATP pro, Marcel Ilhan, and he has played Nadal on clay at the 2015 Rome Masters event. And we're going to be explaining how that experience went and what it felt like to actually play the king of clay on his favorite surface. So Marcel, in 2015, you head on to the clay court season and you play the Rome Masters event. What happened? Uh, I play uh, against one of the best uh, clay player, Rafael Nadal, and I have uh, a small story how I get to that matches. Yes. I went to Madrid, and in Madrid, I lost, I think, a second or first round, I don't remember, to Jimena Traver. It was tough draw in Madrid, altitude uh, against fast them. Fast balls. Yeah, fast balls, many high balls to the backhand, what I don't like, yes. you, know, it's, it's, you know. So he beat me and right after we moved to Rome. And very I, different conditions. I just think about that match, so how I can beat this guy, you know. And the first, what I, is coming to the head, to beat this guy, you shouldn't get out from the, that backhand. You know, when you put your spin, Take it on the rise or do something take different. Take it on the rise, you know, or get back. But the best solution is take on the rise and get out. Or take uh, first forehand, you know, to start take to Take control the point. And um, in the match, during the match, I start in music, you know. I try to take a ball to the right. I try to move from my forehand. I go more aggressive. Of course, it was advantage because it's not altitude in Rome, you yes. know. So and now uh, I won this in two sets. Uh, I beat uh, second round, uh, won first round in Masters, and it was Nadal coming up. So, <laughs> so when you see Nadal is your next opponent, what is your mindset like? What are you thinking at that moment? It was also nothing to lose, you know. I it's play an experience. Experience, you know. I think he won Madrid or place uh, final. He come from Madrid. I also have three matches behind me yes so it was not first round also for me you know I more relaxed but for, I was thinking also experiencing that ball I also never practiced with Nadal okay so that's the first time you yeah, actually the first hit his time ball. experience I ask for the players what is going on you know uh, get some tips yes uh, even like a day before I practiced with Federer. Wow. <laughs> and Federer asked during the practice, you know, who is your opponent? I said, it's Nadal. I said, he's, he's starting to smile, you know. <laughs> he already knows. You, everybody knows what's happening yeah. on clay season, you know, with Federer and Nadal. So you come to the match, and what were your tactics heading into the match? What are you thinking about doing with your game? Are you keeping the same game that's helped you win three matches, or are you changing it slightly? Oh, I was thinking it's not gonna help. I should be more aggressive, you know, when- uh, Taking the get, ball on. To get out everything, you know, what I have to not. And I starting well, exactly. Actually, I have a break point in 2-1. Yes. And I, re I remember I hit the line and uh, Leisman make a uh, change, you know. They, uh, they changed this They point, overruled it. Overruled it. I have one break point and I don't use it that break point. And after I understand if if he break him, if you break you, it will be hard. Yes. And in the beginning, the speed of him is not was so fast. What the uh, players explained me, you know, in the beginning, he's not that fast. He's not he's a accurate. slow starter. He's starting slower, but during the match is getting slower or fa sorry, faster and faster. Heavier ball. Yeah, very heavy, and when he get the confidence, it's, it destroy you. And in the first few games, what really stood out for you? What was like, uh, wow, this is he's he does this amazing. For example, I will be try to explain on the court on the drills. So with Nadal, it's spin. You know, the heavy spin. Heavy spin, especially from return. Yes. You know, and you couldn't understand, or you should stay. If you stay, you also crushing sometimes this ball. Or when you go out behind the ball, from there you are not effective. So he can open the court. You know, he starts to move you. He starts to move you. But we, I understand the key of that match is the serves. You should uh, have heavy um, percentage during the match, many aces. Yes. And from the forehand, you, on the back thing, you go to risk, you know, to approaches because every ball come in, you know, especially in clay. Yes. So you should go for it. And how many points you can 
do straight, you know, to... So keeping the point short and being very aggressive. Be aggressive and not miss, of course. Yes. When you're starting rushing also, percentage mistakes is going up. Yeah, of course. So this is also... That is the battle. That was experience. I understand how you should practice to beat this, you know, this is not enough, you know? Yes. Because we're always thinking there's enough practice. It's, uh, this is not enough. This is different. You have to keep league. going. You, you keep going. Amazing. And after the match, looking back and, and going back to training, did you change the way you practiced because of that experience playing Nadal? Yeah, of course. This is, was Djokovic experience, Wawrinka experience. And I have get good results after that matches. You know, I have a great season. Yes. And I understand uh, how you should work. You know, in tennis, there's no limit to the work. We always think it's well, limited, you know, but there's no limit. Keep going. And most important, I understand the speed. Yes. You know, the, without speed, it's not possible to play on high level. And what really stood out for you with Nadal's game? Like you said, the spin. Was his speed impressive? The speed, uh, spin, but especially to the backhand. When you, when you lock you to the backhand, I understand you, you, you need to very good backhand down the line, spin, especially to get out from the uh, Djokovic style. Shot. Yeah. Or you have like shot to attack from the backhand. But yes. if you don't attack him, he just lock you to that side and suddenly he moved to down the line. Which Hits is the, the best, winner. best shot. But for example, serve, I don't expect too much, you know, that big serve. His serve is okay. But that kind of patterns he do perfectly. And especially like for example, white serve. Yes. And right immediately hit down the line. Okay. It's amazing. So it's pat patterns of play There's off the serve. Of the, yeah. He's a pattern of the game, it was incredible. Do you think if Nadal was right-handed, he would be such a great player? Or do you think the fact that he is a left-hander, his forehand's going into most players' backhand, cross-court, of course, do you think that gives him a massive, a massive advantage? Of course, left-handed is make you a problem, you know? Because different player, different way of the ball. Yes. And if you ask me what the best, what you like, what, which part I can get from Nadal, I think it's return. It's returning, it's uh, with high spin. High it's percentage. High very high percentage, you know, what I like, you know. Because when you see the Nadal matches, uh, okay, is in beginning he returning, you can make some winners, but during the match... Gets better and better. It's getting better and better, and some points you're starting missing that return. Or from these high returns he can get advantage, you know, right after, you know, a huge spin. Yes. You get a little bit, make ball up, he was already from the forehand, he start your movement. So this is very, of course, he have other parts, you know, yes. to do, but this is That's the main thing. I like. Like all, all players, I can search one part, what is best with coming also to Federer. Yes. What I try to explain, which part you can feel is more strong. But from Nadal, I take this part, the return of the game. During the match, how many unforced errors do you remember him making? Not many. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> so how, how would you, if you played him again now, how would you approach the match differently? Would you start being more aggressive? Would you say, I know I have to be very consistent, but I also have to be extremely aggressive to actually win the point? I think extremely aggressive, you know. If you will be consistent, it just... It just dominates you. Yeah, you don't uh, put any pressure to him, you know. Okay. Even there was Federer, when he beat him last time, he will be so aggressive, you know. Yes. Take a ball and rise. When this kind of player, when they have time, they feel very comfortable. They can start to dominate the they point. They start to dominate and... Very good. Federer is a good example, you know, yes. when he started beating him. Especially Australian Open 2017. Took this the backhand on the rise. My backhand on the rise, yes, uh, approaching, you know. Keeping the point shorter. Yeah. That was my experience play against Nadal. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, of course, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on our future lessons. Signing off, Coach Simon with Marcel. See you soon, guys. Take care.